Hey there, everybody. Just wanted to take a few uh, minutes out of this hot July afternoon and say uh, thank you guys for all that you continue to do as a church. Thank you for what you're uh, uh, doing in the community. Uh, thank you for loving on people. We're not able to meet this, uh, this week, this Sunday, but uh, we have some things uh, planned for you. My wife and I are going to be singing here uh, here just a second. And then Brother Steve is going to be bringing a message to us. But uh, I want to say welcome and thank you so much, guys so much for tuning in. And uh, we hope that God continues to bless you in your life. church. I hope you're doing well. We are all doing well here just to kind of give you an update. Nobody else has showed any symptoms of any kind and Emily is much better. So everything is really going well. I hope everything is going well with you and we haven't heard of anybody else showing any kind of symptoms. So and we were extra cautious by not meeting as a, a group on Sunday but you know that, that's okay. We'll do it online and then we'll gather back together and meet and worship together next week. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> today is start a two-part. I want to go through 1 Peter chapter 2, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Of course, you know by now, whichever chapter I'm studying and reading and excited to share with you is really one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. So <clears throat> it just works out that way. <clears throat> but 1 Peter chapter 2 is really has two parts. I mean, you can break it down further than that, but it really has two parts. And the first part is really our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ Jesus. And the second part is really our response to that, our response to our identity, to who we are, to what God has done for us. Now, starting off 1 Peter chapter 2, chapter 2 
uh, verse 1, Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, you've heard this scripture before, like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow and respect the salvation. It's important for us as Christians to grow up in the Lord. We need to grow spiritually. And how do we do that? We do that by um, accountability with others. We do that by studying the word. We do that by spending time in prayer and putting to practice the things that we learn. If you don't do these things, you're going to continue requiring milk and not grow up to having meat. And so it is important for us to grow. Now, you can be a an, an older person and still be a newborn baby in the Lord, especially if you just accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior as an older person. But it's important for us, every person's individual, individual personal responsibility to grow up in the Lord. And uh, won't that be, I mean, it's very important. I can't stress that enough for us to accomplish the purpose as a body of Christ, as an individual, and as the body of Christ, we need to grow up in the Lord. And then in verse 3, it says, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, it will not happen. And you know, so what that also says is that people who are not saved and people who are not believers in Jesus are not going to act like mature believers. It's hard to get believers to act like mature believers half the time. <clears throat> and then in verse 4, and coming to him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. And so... Man, think of that, how God sees us and how he sees you and how precious your salvation is to him. And sometimes I think we take it a little for granted. Uh, we're, we're walking not, we walk by faith, not by sight, but God sees us and knows who we are. And our salvation is precious in the sight of God. And I promise you, yours, if you don't appreciate it now, you will appreciate your salvation uh, when you're in the sight of God. <clears throat> you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. For a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable, acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Now what that means, you're growing up in Christ, your understanding of who you are. All of that is very, very important because you serve a purpose. And us, we together as the body of Christ, as Pecan Baptist Church, and then that being a part of a bit the bigger picture with the universal church. And we, we serve an important part and we serve a purpose. So never... Never think your life doesn't mean something or it doesn't have purpose. Because you're in Christ, your life has purpose. And so, for this, now look at verse 6. For this is contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone. Now, we know who that choice stone is, right? That is Jesus Christ. Well, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. Now, I love that because... Have you ever been disappointed in life? Well, of course you have. Everybody's been disappointed with something uh, or somebody. It happens all the time. Of course we're disappointed, but you will never be disappointed in the decision that you made to follow Jesus Christ. You're not going to be disappointed when you see what God has planned for you. And I tell you, keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes focused on Him, because and you will not be disappointed in Jesus Christ. If you... If you put your faith in me, I'm going to disappoint you at some point. Your own family members, somebody's going to disappoint you. Your own health, your country, whatever the case, you're going to be disappointed in those things at some point or another, but you will not be disappointed in Jesus Christ. You will not be. It says right there in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. This precious value, then, is for you who believe. But for those who disbelieve, look, also a prophecy in Scripture, the stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone. So the Jews rejected him as a nation, the builders, and he came through that nation and is the Messiah and provided a sacrifice, and they rejected him, and therefore he became the sacrifice. And then in verse 8, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. For they stumble because they are disobedient to the word, and to this doom they were also appointed. Now verse 9 and 10, the last two verses we're going to look at today. I'm going to try to keep it short today and to the point. And now, as a result of these things, your newborn babies and your salvation, and we are to grow and to grow up in the Lord, and we understand that we are to offer up spiritual sacrifices. We do this with not just 
money, but we do this with our time. We do this with our love. We do this with service. We do it with all these things. And we do all of these things because, look, verse 9, but you are a chosen race. Remember, I told you there's only two races on earth that really matter. There's only two, two types of people, those that know Jesus and those that are lost. That's it. That's the only two divisions of people that really matter. And our goal is to get people that are in, we to grow up, we grow up and we get stronger, but our goal is to get people from one group to the other, to get people who are lost to be found in Jesus Christ. That's our goal. So there's only two divisions of people that really matter. And there's a lot of talk about all these different races and people and things. You know what? I don't really care about that. I want to know, you know, are you a believer in Jesus? And if you're not a believer in Jesus, you should become a Christian right away. That's, that's really the, the division that matters. Now look, verse 9. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. So, guys, can I tell you, you're a priest. <laughs> yeah, think about that. Now, but you are a chosen race, a royal peace, priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. I don't know how you think of yourself, but this is what the Bible says about you. You know, maybe you struggle with self-esteem and you don't understand who you are in Christ, but what does the Bible say about you? You know, don't believe the lies of Satan and the lies of the world that says things about you or tells you you're no good or this or that. This is what God says about you. You're a chosen race, a holy, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim, again, purpose, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I just love that scripture. And so you, because you have been saved, you have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Wow. Now look at verse 10 and we'll close with this. For you were once, for you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You are, you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So now, remember who you are in Christ Jesus. What does the Bible say? What does God say about you? What does God say? Are you going to believe the lies? Or are you going to believe who you really are? Now go back to the beginning of this text and let's all work towards growing up. Let's become mature believers in Jesus Christ. It doesn't happen overnight. And it takes some work to grow up in Christ, to, to a spiritual exercise and spiritual discipline. We need to apply ourselves to grow up. In the Word, so we may grow in respect to our salvation. This is important because we serve a purpose. Your life is not a waste. And no matter if you only have a, a few years left, whatever the case is, make it count. And the way we make it count, grow up in the Lord and serve the purpose that God created you for. Well, Pastor, I missed my calling. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Well, what's your calling today? You know, if you missed something before, then you God has a purpose for your life from this point forward. So let's carry out the purpose and the will of God in our lives for today and for tomorrow. And because you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. And he has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And I'm telling you, since you placed your faith in Jesus Christ, you will not be disappointed. God says so. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, help us. God, we want to grow up in the Lord. God, if we just, if we do nothing, then we're really going backwards. And God, help us to grow up in the Lord. Help us to exercise spiritual disciplines such as prayer and studying the Word and service and those things and begin walking, taking our baby steps to grow and to continue to grow in the Lord. God, also, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ and help us to understand that we do serve a purpose Thank you for Jesus Christ and that in our faith in him, we will not be disappointed. Thank you also in the word for telling us who we are in Christ Jesus, that we are a chosen, we're, we're a chosen people and we're after God's own possession. And you've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. God, thank you so much for salvation in Jesus Christ. And God, help us to carry out the purpose from this day forward that you created us to. Amen. God bless you guys. I hope you all have a great week, and we will get together, unless something breaks or comes untwisted, right? We'll get together 
a week from Sunday and we'll worship together as a group. But just God bless you guys. Stay safe. Grow in the Lord. Carry out the purpose God created you for. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week.